The past decade has seen a resurgence in the field of reinforcement learning, with DQN performing above human level at various Atari games in 2013. In 2016, we heard the news of AlphaGo's victory over Lisa Dull, making it the first computer program to beat a professional human Go player. This was followed by news in 2019 of OpenAI 5's uh, defeat of the Dota 2 World Champions, making it the first AI system to uh, beat uh, the World Champions in an esports game. In fact, we started off this decade strong with news of DeepMind's Agent 57 outperforming human benchmarks in all 57 Atari games. Hello there awesome people of the internet. Thanks for stopping by. I'm Sasha Nair and welcome to this channel. If you're wondering what is reinforcement learning or what is the basic terminology that goes with the field, then this video is for you. So let's get started. From a bird's eye view of the topic, reinforcement learning, similar to supervised learning and unsupervised learning, is an umbrella term that encompasses a range of different machine learning algorithms. The thing that makes reinforcement learning stand out as compared to the rest is that it learns from experience by interacting with the environment. But what does that even mean? Let's take a step back and understand this with an example. Consider the example of you wanting to understand the basics of reinforcement learning, for which you go to YouTube and type in the keywords reinforcement learning introduction. You're presented with, say, three options, and you pick one at random, which happens to be a video titled Basics of RL. But five seconds in, you realize that it's not really making much sense to you. So you go back to the list and pick the next option, which happens to be a video titled Introduction to RL. In this video helps you kind of sort of understand the uh, RL algorithm setup, but things are still a bit iffy. So you go back to the list and pursue the third option, which happens to be this video. And you realize by the end of it that you now have a clearer understanding of the RL problem and can even explain terms like reward and return. What you did here was an example of trial and error learning where you tried out a bunch of different actions and evaluated each of your actions to figure out the best uh, way to complete the given task. Now that you've completed the task of understanding the basics of RL, you've built an association with this video, such that every time you feel the need to review your basics in RL, you would, want, uh, you would return to this particular video. This phenomenon was studied extensively by Edward Thorndike in 1904 using puzzle boxes and cats. Um, if you want a cool uh, recreation of the experiment with the German Shepherd named Snuggly, view this video. Thorndike noticed that when a particular action in a given situation leads to a pleasant outcome, it is more likely to be repeated than when it is uh, followed by discomfort and named this the law of effect. You might wonder, what does this have to do with reinforcement learning? And well, reinforcement learning can be thought of as a computational implementation of the law of effect. Thus, the reinforcement learning problem can be defined as learning a behavior strategy through trial and error based interaction with the environment that allows the agent to complete the defined task while maximizing return. Okay. Let's deconstruct that statement. In the RL setting, we always have an agent that is placed within the environment where it is meant to complete the assigned task. So in our example, you would be the agent and YouTube the environment. Similar to you randomly picking the different videos available to you, the agent interacts with the environment by performing different random actions. And each action that the agent takes is met with information about the effect of the action on the environment called the state and a reward. The goal of the RL agent then is to learn the best sequence of actions that must be taken, that is the behavior strategy or more formally referred to as the policy to complete the given task. And the metric to determine how good a policy is, is based on the total reward obtained from following the policy referred to as the return. Thus, 
The agent must find the policy that manages to accumulate the highest total reward. The reward signal can therefore be thought of as an evaluator that guides the agent towards the appropriate direction. You might wonder, the idea seems pretty intuitive in theory. Surely, the 2010s can't be the first time that someone's thought about trying this out. And well, you would be quite right then. In the 1980s, Andrew Barto, Richard Sutton and team uh, made amazing contributions to the field. In fact, most of the work done today is built on the foundations laid out by them. Of course, they weren't the first ones either. Um, in fact, mentions of similar ideas can be found in uh, Alan Turing's writings dating back to the 1940s. So why then the current hype in the field? The recent developments in um, deep learning have helped establish the field of deep reinforcement learning. As the name suggests, it combines the RL framework with deep neural networks to push for uh, progress in the field and lead to the current string of successes that we have seen in the past decade. So to summarize, Reinforcement learning refers to the set of algorithms that use trial and error to learn goal-directed behavior. The recent successes in reinforcement learning can be attributed to um, the use of deep neural networks to train reinforcement learning agents. Even though we've made a lot of progress this past decade in reinforcement learning, we still have a lot of issues that need to be resolved. But we leave that discussion for another time. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you found this useful. And see you again soon. Ciao.